Atlas, Atlas, uh, in the high, yes. in the hot seat tonight. And Atlas goes by the name of Atlas the Bookkeeper. How you feeling, my friend? So let's get back to the topic at hand. My react show. So one problem we had with the react show was that anything that was deemed content for children we could never watch on the show, and therefore it immediately eliminated quite a lot of clips from being watched. Another thing which is the, literally the opposite side of the spectrum here, is clips that are actually flagged on YouTube as only for adults, okay? And you might say, what kind of content is that? To be honest with you, it's not even content that, like, would be deemed for, like, a rated R movie. Because you might be able to think, oh, maybe it's, like, gore, stuff like that. No, it's basically stuff with risque content, you know, a really strong language or something about race or something about you know, a dangerous situation, you know, videos with cops involved in them and stuff like that. It's been really dumb stuff, quite frankly. Like, I think maybe once or twice I discovered a clip like, oh, I probably wouldn't want to watch that on my show. For the most part, the videos that are labeled as adults only on YouTube are not actually that bad. It's just that YouTube wants to err on the side of caution because they don't want another ad apocalypse. For those who don't know, back in 2017, a ton of big high profile advertisers literally pulled out of YouTube and said, we no longer want to advertise on your site because you're putting our ads on videos that are absolutely ridiculously risque over the top stuff that we would never want to advertise on. We're talking videos where people were ranting about race wars and how, you know, they liked Nazis or, you know, real terrorist style content or people saying the N word. And then there's an ad for Starbucks on it, right? So after that happened, uh, YouTube basically made it so that certain videos would be flagged as adults only, so that way ads don't go on them. Not necessarily they can't even care about you watching the content, they just don't want ads going on inappropriate videos and then them losing all ad revenue again, right? So, the problem is, you never really know what video will be flagged or won't be flagged. So, people would be submitting videos for the show, and without fail, at least a couple videos a week would be flagged as adults only, and I'd have to go back to the person who was a member and be like, well, I'm sorry, you know, we can't watch your clip this week. It's not something that I, I do. I'm not weeding it out. It's just that we just can't watch it. Could you maybe submit two clips next week and stuff like that? And basically what's happened is we went from a show, right, that was getting, you know, probably about 50 to 70 members a month, and these problems have made these members kind of get just dis what's the word um disinterested in the show because we can't always watch the clips that they want me to watch right now in addition to that let's be honest as well as the numbers start to dwindle and the interest starts to wane because when you're doing a show every week it doesn't feel special anymore right if you're doing a show every once in a while special if you're doing it literally every week it doesn't feel so special anymore so what ended up happening was um Whatever what ended up happening was people, you know, reduced the amount that they were becoming members. So the clips started to come every week from the same people, right? And of course, if we have the same 10 people who are ultra members submitting clips every week, you're going to start to see a pattern. Videos about Warhammer 40K, videos about Singapore, or, you know, things like that that are similar topics. And... After a while of seeing a few of those videos, you start to get tired of them, right? Videos from the same content creators doing skits, the same cooking channel, right? Over and over and over. And you're like, oh, all right, I'm tired of this now. But hey, I mean, it's the same person who's an Ultra member and they like me reacting to that clip and they have the right to request it. So ultimately, where I feel the show kind of went wrong, there's a couple missteps here. And these are things that there was no way we were going to learn about this until essentially i did the show right like i had to do the show to learn the lessons to make better content in the long term so lesson number one if i'm going to do react content i pretty much shouldn't do it on youtube i should stream it somewhere else where they're not going to flag my stream or take down my stream or demonetize my stream i should do it somewhere where i know it's not going to be interrupted if, if you don't know how it works on YouTube, if you're streaming and it's, oh, this clip is deemed for kids or for adults, or, or, oh, that's content ID matching content on YouTube. What they do is they take your stream down for three minutes until the AI algorithm 
determines that you're no longer streaming the copywritten content, and then your stream will come back. But it's very frustrating to have to deal with that in the middle of a live stream. You're looking over like, oh, come on, the stream went down. Now I got to pause, wait three minutes. Then I got to fast forward to the next clip. Why won't they just let me watch what I want to watch? If you stream on other places, for example, streaming on Kick, Kick doesn't do that at all. Kick lets you stream. Now, they'll tell you after the fact, okay? Um, <clears throat> after the fact, they'll tell you, hey, uh, you know, you did something that we don't approve of, delete the clip. But they're not going to shut your stream down unless you're doing extreme stuff. You know what I mean? Like, Kick is a lot better. At it. I actually heard that Kino Casino, like last year, the year before, they actually were live streaming and reacting to like a Scooby-Doo movie live, which obviously you can't do, it's copywritten. And they got away with it. And then after the fact, basically, Kick contacted them and said, you don't do that again and delete the, the video on demand. And they did. And then they didn't get into any trouble. So they're a lot more lenient with how stuff happens on Kick. So if I'm going to do React content, I absolutely should be streaming it on Kick. <clears throat> like, it just makes sense. Why would I stream it on YouTube when we know we're going to possibly have all of these problems? Kids' videos, adult videos, content ID matches, you know, stupid stream getting shut down. It doesn't make sense. It's just too much of a pain in the ass. I want to have a streamlined, uninterrupted experience for you guys. Not we're sitting here and we never know what we're doing. We're walking on eggshells watching these clips. It's, it's dumb, right? It's just a really stupid system. Um, so that's the first part. We'll talk about the second part in a second. And now we're up to $12 in support. Okay. So now, <clears throat> let's talk about something else that I really feel, sadly, hurt the momentum of the React show. We were about one year, <clears throat> one whole year into the React show. It was like January or February of this year. All right? And all of a sudden, my detractors and trolls discover this really stupid loophole on YouTube where you could use a VPN to act like you are located in a different part of the, the world, and you can buy things via that VPN that are definitely way cheaper than they're supposed to be. So they started doing this and coming to YouTube and doing things like mass buying YouTube premium subscriptions for like pennies on the dollar, and they started mass buying memberships. So they flooded my YouTube channels with this. DSP Gaming, DSP Reacts, and even when I launched DSP Throwback, they basically went to those channels and said, oh, I'm going to gift 50 members, 100 members, 500 members. And they were paying like two bucks to do it, okay? So what ended up happening is I had to scramble and I had to find a way to undermine this because here's the deal. This could completely destroy my React channel. Again, remember, my React channel was based on memberships. So Ultra members and these standard level members were submitting clips to be watched. Well, if overnight, all of a sudden, every single person has a free standard membership because people were using VPNs to buy them for like 50 for 10 cents, right? Obviously, the whole show is going to get ruined. We can't have it be public submissions because now there's going to be 5,000 submissions and we'll never be able to watch any of them, right? And let's be honest, if the most of the revenue was coming from memberships and now memberships were worthless, the show was going to become defunct overnight. So I had to scramble to fix this. And the only real way to do it was I had to change up the tiers of membership on DSP React. I had to control another a control. I had to create another tier. So it used to be called standard members. I had to change that and then change it to be submissions tier members. Okay, so the cost of being a member went from four bucks to five bucks. And there was nothing I could do about that. There was actually no way for me to fix it because this is a YouTube side issue that's in their system. I've notified YouTube about this multiple times over the years, others as well, and no one really cares. They just let it ride and never fix it. So these trolls almost ruined the React show. But by me creating this new tier of membership, the show was able to continue, but definitely I saw a huge dip in support. Like I was getting, no lie, probably around 30, maybe more than that, members a week. And so, or members a month, I should say. And if you do the math there, let's say that they're $4 each times like 30 or 40. So I was making like 150 to $200 just on those members. Then I was getting ultra members and then I was making ad revenue. Overnight, I basically lost 
hundreds of dollars of revenue that I was making each month on that sh channel in the show because they were abusing the memberships. So because it's out of my control, you know, I did my best, but I lost a ton of support. So now, essentially, I'm losing the amount of members that I had for the show. The show is not allowed to be as free as we want it to be because we can't watch all the clips because of the kids only and the adults only. The streams are getting flagged and shut down midstream because of content ID. And then we're getting the same people submitting similar clips every single week. So it basically became a convoluted, unmanageable mess. And people didn't like it. At first, people did. And I think what it was is when the show started, the idea of, hey, we can get Phil to watch this clip that we've always wanted to see him watch, right? You guys were submitting some classic YouTube stuff. The original Boogie videos, right? Of how he got famous or Angry Grandpa or a meme from a million years ago, right? What was it? The Duck Song. Stuff like that that's like YouTube history. But I don't know about YouTube history because I never followed it. I wasn't like a YouTuber who followed the memes or anything. I was someone who always just did his own thing and kind of didn't pay attention to what was going around uh, YouTube with, with that kind of level of content. So it was actually fascinating, <clears throat> excuse me, fascinating. And I would even say last year was extra cool because once we hit the holidays, we were doing like horror and Halloween themed content all October. We were doing Christmas content in November and December, and it made the show feel special for that time of year. It really did. But then this year, with all these issues, the, you know, the VPN memberships, people, you know, reducing massively the amount of uh, support that the channel was getting, um, all these issues just compiled. And I noticed every single week, we were getting less viewers, we were getting less support on the live streams, and we were getting less members. And so finally, when the summertime hit, I kind of made the decision that I was going to probably discontinue the show or change its format. It was just a matter of like, when? And what I originally wanted to do, I wanted the show to hit 100 episodes. And I figured when we hit 100, we'll retire it and we'll change the format. But what's happened is over the course of this year, as you know, I had a resurgence back in August. Now, I have more people who want me to do different kinds of content. And they, I have more people who want me to branch out and do things like politics or, hey, react to a big video essay or a documentary as opposed to just sit there reacting to random clips. Because I guess what we should do, we should outline the lessons learned from doing a show like this. So that way we don't make the same mistakes twice, correct? All right, we will do that in a second, but I received a $5 tip 